Hi everyone, and thank you, thank you for coming. I am uh, Chitov Cohen uh, from the Technion, Technion University in Israel. And today I would like to share with you my research or my algorithm of routing service for blind pedestrian. So this morning I woke from graduate hotel to this conference hall in very simple and easy uh, route. But then I thought to myself, how to, do, how to do this simple route, but with closed eyes. That sounds much more difficult. 1.3 billion people are with some kind of vision impairment, and 36 million of them are completely blind. So when they are going out, instead of using the eyes, they need to use other senses, like hearing, like smelling, which require much more mental work. In addition, they need to avoid from obstacles along the, along, the, along the way. And when they come to cross the road, they need to understand exactly where to, where to cross the road and when, by listening carefully to the traffic patterns. So the, the, the process of navigation and wayfind much more difficult than the way we used to. So they prefer not to walk in unfamiliar uh, familiar, uh, environment. Just to emphasize this point, I would like to show with you my <coughs> route that I am doing every day from, my, from the, this bus station to my faculty. This is also, also the route that a street, a, that OpenStreetMap uh, proposed. But when we look into the road, into the route, we can see two problems. In one, crossing a parking lot, which is very dangerous area for blind pedestrian. In addition, they need to cross road without any walk cross. So my goal is build a routing service for blind pedestrian, which based on weighted graph that take into account all the preferences and needs of blind pedestrian. So let's take this uh, graph as an example. Each number here, each is a cost or weight uh, for each uh, segment, which imply how much this segment is accessible for blind pedestrian. So higher number imply of no, uh, less accessible for blind pedestrian. Another way, way around, this segment is low, low number or low value, so means it's more accessible than this one. All the data we used are only from OpenStreetMap, tags and elements. So the workflow consists of three steps. One, understand what their preferences and needs. When they are walking, what helps them to understand where they are and what they try to avoid. Then take this side, these insights into a, a, then use these insights into categories that we can use to build the uh, weighted graph. So each segment in the graph will be analyzed by, by these criteria or these uh, categories. And finally, we can uh, we need to uh, do some pilot study and analyzes to see if. If the, uh, to check out our uh, algorithm. So the first step accomplished by meet uh, by meeting with other with the pedestrian uh, with the blind pedestrian and also with OMI, which is orientation and mobility structure that practically uh, plan for blind pedestrian their route the, their daily route from for example from their. Uh, 
bus to the job place or, or the uh, school and, and etc. Those uh, blind pedestrian uh, was from Israel and also from um, United States uh, in, from uh, New York City. In addition, we participate in training session when OMI learn learn new uh, a new route for the for uh, blind pedestrian and also um, we we observe on how they uh, how, how the blind pedestrian uh, walking in uh, in their uh, in their route so we took all this data all this information into four criteria the first criteria is complexity which means that they prefer to walk in straight direction more than, rather than a complex direction, a lot of curves and turning, turns. The second criteria is landmarks. There are some, criteria, uh, there are some um, landmarks that can assist them to understand where they are. For example, if you have a supermarket with a unique uh, sound, or if you have a bakery with, with the um, distinct uh, smell, smelling, so it helps them to understand where they are and more importantly, where, they, where to go. A intersection point, which is the pl a, a location where they need to make decision like turn right or turn left, or continue to go straight, that goes straight, straight is a, a, is like a, it's called the decision point so landmarks in these places even, is even more important because they help them to make the right decision and then they have the we have the length they are also preferred to walk in a shortest shorter uh, route to, to their destination and finally a way type uh, which is a um, taken directly from OpenStreetMap, like if it's only for pedestrian or shared with uh, cars, with, uh, with uh, bicycles, etc. So before we implement the, uh, implemented the, the algorithm, we did some, uh, uh, we, com uh, we complete some uh, missing data uh, in our campus. And then we, uh, we built uh, tools in ArcGIS that get an area in OpenStreetMap and then download all the necessary all the element all the necessary element to the algorithm and finally uh, we, you obtain a weighted graph in the, that area. In addition, we, had, we we built another tool that allowed the user to uh, to decide which criteria is more, which criterion is more important than others. Uh, for example, if you work with a guide dog, you, maybe you have different diff preferences if you work with a cane. Um, <clears throat> so those are the elements that, uh, those, are, those are the tags that based on them, uh, we built the weighted graph. So, how we implemented each criteria. So for each uh, segment, the, the algorithm check how many landmarks around him. For the complexity, the algorithm count the substantial curves, which means uh, curves, uh, uh, large, uh, which means uh, angle between two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two segments more than 45 degrees. And way type just by looking on the tags in OpenStreetMap and length is length and just looking on the length of each segment. So after some, then some normalizations. So the final uh, step, we have a, a network. So each segment with cost or weight uh, based uh, on the blind pedestrian uh, preferences and needs. Now let's see some results. So the first result is 
route from this point to that point. So the algorithm select this route, even though it's much it's much larger, it's much much uh, longer, because this point is intersection between road and sidewalk without any walk cross, which is dangerous for the blind pedestrian. So the algorithm select this one, which cross road with a uh, walk cross. Another example is here, the algorithm is again, select, select the longer uh, one, because this intersection is more complex than this one. And also this uh, uh, traffic light without any sound and vibration uh, uh, signals at that time today, uh, it's different. Uh, so that's the reason the algorithm select the longer one, but more safety and accessible one. Uh, experiment with blind pedestrian. So we did, uh, we conduct two uh, experiment uh, in Israel and in Manhattan. We ask the blind pedestrian to walk to two different routes. One is the shortest one, the yellow one, and the the and the second one, the Turkish one, is the optimal one that get from our algorithm in Israel and in Manhattan. So in in both cases, the blind pedestrian prefer our the the the, the one that got from our uh, uh, algorithm. They even said that it's, that it felt like it's shortest one than the, the real one. Um, because it was it was simple, um, that uh, the direction was quite easy, and uh, not uh, not interfere like going through uh, uh, parks. Another experiment was made with orientation and uh, mobility instructor. <coughs> so. So again, we ask her to, to walk from this place to this place. The red one is the shortest one. And, it has, and as I explained before, why it's not good, because the parking lot here and here. And then the green one is the result that got from our algorithm. And the blue one is the one that selected by the orientation and mobility instructor. So it's quite similar, the only difference between the, uh, b b here because she said that here we have entrance to a parking which is not good and in addition you prefer to she prefer she prefer uh, suggesting a route that cross uh, um, intersection uh, simple and not uh, even if you, even if you want to sorry uh, she 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 suggested to pre, uh, to to prefer this one because here you need to cross the this intersection twice one and two and in in her uh, route so you cross only one here and one here so it's simpler. Uh, two students of our from our faculty also take <laughs> took our algorithm and try to understand from the, the results of our algorithm how much. Our company, our um, our uh, campus is accessible. So they selected several buildings in the campus, and using the algorithm to find the the optimal route for blind pedestrian, and compare it to the shortest one. So they came to some interesting uh, conclusions. So they found three different type of routes. The first one is the same route, the shortest one and the optimal one. It means that this area is probably quite accessible. The second option, the second uh, type of route was here, which means that the route is quite similar, but in this area, you can see the, the, small, the shortest one. Uh, the shortest one prefer to walk from uh, steps and then do this um, direction. And here the algorithm does just do this, this small detour, but improve the weight a lot. And the, but the, the, the third one is, is this uh, route, which is much longer. 
than the shortest one, and the weight was quite similar, which means this area probably not so accessible for blind pedestrian. Um, so, we learned that OpenStreetMap have the potential to be a very good database for this kind of routing service um, that can improve the safety and the independence of blind pedestrian. But there are still missing that, that data that miss, missing in OpenStreetMap, which is very uh, important to, to that kind of uh, routing service. For example, I can't, I can't, I cannot assume that every road has sidewalk. I can't assume that every intersection have a uh, crossing. Oh, so what we're trying to do today is using deep learning method to, uh, to determine if any intersection has or is not, uh, or is not uh, inter in crossing. Uh, another task we are dealing today is to add more, da add, more, add more information about pedestrian traffic flow, which we learn that is part of the their decision to uh, to choose uh, one route or another. Because busy busy street or empty street is not good for them. Busy because they are very difficult to navigate, and empty is because they need if they need an help, they can't get. So by using uh, another method of, op of um, deep learning, we try to uh, predict it. Uh, we use the data from, uh, we have a sensor all over the uh, center of Tel Aviv in Israel uh, that give, give us the data 24 hours, seven day a week. Uh, so, and we hope that we can uh, predict this uh, type of information. And last one, and last one is, uh, app navigation that use our routing and then gu uh, guide the, uh, navigate the blind pedestrian to his destination. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs>